up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 hyundai palisade courtesy of jack g and volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so wanted to check this one out because if i were to get a new suv right now it would be a three row suv and this would certainly be a contender on the list without a doubt this is Hyundai's three-row SUV competes with the Kia Telluride, the Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, and the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L as well. However, with the Palisade, you do get America's best warranty, being five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper, 10-year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You also get three years of complimentary maintenance, meaning you don't have to pay for things like the oil changes and the tire rotations, things like that. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about the new 2022 Palisade, from acceleration to braking, steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there are going to be several different trim levels for the 2022 palisade first one being the se starting at $33,150 sel for $35,500 limited which actually is the one we have today starting at $45,390 and lastly the calligraphy starting at $46,690 and by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add $1,700 then to any of those prices but so that regardless of trim level that you end up going with the power plant on the palisade is going to be the same powering this beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected v6 putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5200 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic and we do have some paddle shifters here as well so you guys know we will be testing out those paddle shifters in a little bit here but nonetheless zero to 60 time coming in at a approximately 7.1 seconds which is plenty respectable we'll test that out a little bit here but mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 24 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of paddle shifter or acceleration test in the palisade i did want to mention the drive modes there's actually a drive mode circular dial located just to the right of the shift buttons and real quick as far as the shift buttons go it's not a traditional shifter here there's p for park R for reverse and for neutral and D for drive. But back to the driving modes, they will include comfort, eco, sport, smart, snow, sand, and mud plenty of them let me tell you but anyways they adjust things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity and all-wheel drive system engagement and in the very center of it all it says lock that is going to be your all-wheel drive system lock i've used that plenty of times in my hyundai santa fe it essentially locks it in the all-wheel drive mode let's say when it's snowing out here in pennsylvania so you know you're going to be plenty fine as i always have been because hyundai has a very good all-wheel drive system h-track all-wheel drive system to be exact but Anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn it to the left, put it in sport mode. It does change the gauges as well. I forgot to mention that. And I'll show you guys the full digital gauge cluster later in the video when we get to the interior, but it looks dang good. But anyways, having now done that, let's go ahead and find a straightaway here. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, in three, two, one. All right, there is a slight delay, I gotta be honest. So, kind of as expected, typically in three row SUVs, you are going to find that. But having said that, how often are you really going to be using the paddle shifters in a three row SUV anyway? So, really, it is to be expected. I didn't expect them to be quick, but I do like that they're there because what you can use them for is a little bit of engine braking when you're going down a hill, when it's snowing out here in Pennsylvania, for example. So, you don't actually have to hit the brakes and risk sliding off the road. You just do a little engine braking by downshifting using those paddle shifters. and that'll definitely be a whole lot safer. So I would have mentioned that. I'm glad they're there for that particular reason. But now let's go ahead and get back full control to the Palisade. I'm just gonna hit the D button again that gets back full control here. And let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get the new Palisade here up to speed. Green light. Woo! Yeah, buddy. 
<laughs> it's honestly plenty quick. Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. Some people actually ask me, why do you test out the acceleration in family vehicles like SUVs and minivans? You do it because in Pennsylvania, you have plenty of reasons to merge onto the highway and you wanna be able to get up to speed quick so you don't get rear-ended or anything like that. So you're definitely not gonna have any issues with the Palisade. It is plenty quick for what it is without a doubt. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 12.4 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 126 feet, which isn't bad. It's kind of respectable. Maybe a little bit on the higher side. As far as the braking feel goes, it definitely leans towards the soft side. It's not a bad thing. Again, it's kind of to be expected in a three row SUV. Wouldn't have minded a little bit more bite to the brake so and maybe that would improve upon that 60 to zero stopping distance not that it's bad plenty of three-row suvs come in in even the upper 130 so 126 feet is plenty respectable like i said but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as the ride quality goes it's probably one of the first things i noticed when i got in this one it is plush it is plenty fine hyundai is definitely been killing it with ride quality lately specifically so definitely absorbing pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely i do dig the ride quality on this thing and that's even without an air suspension or adaptive suspension or anything like that still plenty good in the palisade without a doubt then touching on cabin noise though that's still i believe hyundai's room for improvement now right now when i'm going 27 miles per hour it's not bad you don't get any wind noise any road noise whatsoever of course guys could probably tell that i am driving right now and i'm not getting anything so that's a good thing but once you hit highway speeds maybe 55 miles per hour plus you do get a bit of wind noise coming in from the driver's side window so that is what they can improve upon <laughs> i think i say that every time i drive a palisade but still that is the room for improvement. It's not bad, it's something you get used to. I have it in my Hyundai Santa Fe as well. I also have it in my Hyundai Sonata actually, so wouldn't mind if they improved upon that a little bit. As far as steering feel goes, it's definitely on the looser side. Having said that, you can adjust the steering feel by simply adjusting the drive mode. So if you put it in that sport driving mode, you're gonna have a much heavier feel, instantly pointing you in the direction that you wanna go. But if you put it back to comfort like I'm in right now, definitely pretty loosey-goosey. So kind of best of both worlds there. You can adjust that, so steering feel is not a problem for that particular reason for me. Then touching on visibility, I can see plenty fine out the back. Even with those third row headrests up right now, I can still see plenty fine out the back. So definitely no issues there. Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the limited and calligraphy trim levels if you wanted them. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Palisade detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for it, kind of like automatic headlights. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about there. And there is a heads up display I am currently looking at right now that is going to come standard on the limited in calligraphy as well and that is projecting my speed as well as the speed limit of any given road and there will be some safety features projected up on my windshield then as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Palisade. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Palisade. Let me just jump right into it and start with the one exterior change for 2022, being the calligraphy trim level specifically is going to get some additional chrome trim up front around that front grille, but that's really about it when it comes to the exterior changes for the 2022 model year. So let's start up front. LED headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that. You don't always get that. LED accent lighting also coming standard. And by the way, those headlights, they do come with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming standard along with automatic high beams as well i love that feature essentially what that is is when you turn the high beams on it's going to leave them on until it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction and then it's going to dim that back down and then when that vehicle is gone it's going to put it back up to high beams once again so definitely a pretty cool feature there front skid plates i did want to mention also are going to come on the calligraphy trim level only you're not going to get them on our limited trim that we have today so did want to mention that that front grille looks so beastly so good up front i love this silver accenting towards the bottom portion and that front bumper as well it goes very nice with our silver exterior color that we have today so overall very nice look up front especially those headlights but 
pretty much rounds out the front of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the palisade. All right, and so climbing into the woods for you guys yet again. I love doing that. But anyways, roof rails coming with the SEL trim level and up. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board. And you do have some silver accenting surrounding the windows. I think you guys could see that. That looks pretty darn good as well door handle welcome lights. I love that feature coming with the SEL trim level and up. Matte black side skirts actually coming with the SE and SEL. However, if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, you will get body colored side skirts, which of course is what you guys are looking at right now. And that goes around the fender wells as well. It's going to be a little matte black for the SE and SEL. So didn't want to emphasize that because that is a big exterior difference between some of the trim levels there. Puddle lights coming with the calligraphy trim level only. When it comes to the door handles, you're going to get sat and chrome door handle accents for the SEL trim level and up. Then taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored heated side mirrors for all trim levels across the board with LED integrated turn signals if you go with the SEL trim level and up only. So wanted to emphasize that as well. And they look pretty darn good in those side mirrors. I will say that it's a cool design to them. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 20 inch alloy wheels coming standard across the board. However, all of them specific to their own trim level will vary in design. So this particular design that you guys are looking at is specific to the limited trim level the calligraphy has more of a flat look to the wheels and so like I said they're all going to be different dependent upon the trim level that you go with but good looking side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one all right so now since we are around back of this one all the way to the top gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper and just below that you will find the palisade lettering spelled out horizontally there on the rear tailgate It'll definitely looks pretty good you are going to get some silver accenting found on the inside portion of those tail lights so again silver accenting going very well with our silver exterior that we have here today rear skid plates coming with calligraphy trim level only and that's going to tie in with the front skid plates of course led tail lights coming standard on the limited and calligraphy trim level. So gonna have a little better illumination there with those particular two trims. Again, some more silver accenting towards the bottom portion of that rear bumper and just below it all, a single exhaust outlet with satin chrome dual tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around back of the Palisade, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate if you were to go with the limited trim level and up. Therefore, all you need to do is walk up behind that thing with the key in your pocket. There's actually a button on the key fob as well that is yet another way to go ahead and open it up. And there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at an even 18 cubic feet behind that third row at least. If that was not enough space, can fold that third row down, bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, 86.4 cubic feet, which is definitely a good bit. I currently have a three row Santa Fe that comes in at an even 80 cubic feet. So I like that this one is bigger. It's definitely a good thing. And there is a 60 40 split, of course, to the seats. And when it comes to actually folding those rear seats down, it's actually buttons in the cargo area if you wanted to use them. It is power folding, at least for the limited that we have today. So that is a very nice and easy way to go ahead and fold those rear seats down. And I did like that. But in floor storage, is actually going to come standard on all trim levels across the board. I like that as well. And it's actually a decent amount of in-floor storage back there too, to my surprise. Cargo lighting coming standard. We do have the LED cargo lighting. That is pretty cool. And I'll get more into that when we get to interior quality. Grocery bag hooks also found back there and some tie-down anchors as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the cargo area of the Palisade. But then making our way up to the third row legroom, that is going to come in at 31.4 inches. So on paper, that's not a whole lot, but for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in that third row so you're able to make it work if you slide the second row seats up a little bit because the second row passengers have a ton of rear legroom that they probably don't necessarily need so i believe you can probably fit even an adult in that third row when they would be perfectly fine so long as the second row passengers scoot up just a little bit there rear ventilation does come standard for all rows of seating including the third row it's going to be found on the ceiling of the palisade third row usb charging ports coming with the limited 
limited and calligraphy trim levels only. Did want to emphasize that. And of course you have dual cup holders on both sides in the back in that third row as well. So definitely a lot going on back there. In the second row, that is going to come in at 42.4 inches of rear leg room for reference. I'm an even six feet tall ton of space for myself in that second row. And by the way, second row captain's chairs versus the bench seating. If you go with the SEL trim level and up, you will get captain's chairs coming standard. If you go with the SE trim level, that second row is going to be the bench seating setup. So in case you were curious, or if you were interested in any particular setup, that's how that works. Second row automatic climate control coming with the SEL trim level and up, meaning those rear passengers can set their own temperatures back there. Dual second row USB charging ports also coming standard across the board. You gotta love that. Heated rear seats, I love this, coming standard with the limited trim level and up, but it doesn't stop there. Ventilated second row seats coming with the limited trim level and up as well. You don't always get that with other SUVs, with other minivans out there, so I do like that the Palisade has that. Spoil the rear passengers a little bit. 115 volt power outlet then coming with the limited trim level and up as well, and that's gonna be had for those second row passengers there too. So overall, very nice setup yet again. Then when it comes to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the SE trim level. And then the SEL is going to add to that eight-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar and heated front seats then as well. Then if you were to go with the limited that we have today, that's going to add on top of that Napa leather seating, four-way power lumbar support for the driver's seat, leg cushion extension for the driver's seat then as well, an eight-way power adjustable passenger seat, ventilated front seats, and memory settings for up to two different drivers found on the driver's side door then as well. So Overall, very comfortable seating. I like the diamond patterned stitching in the upper portion of all of the seating for that matter as well. Definitely a very cool look to it, very high-end look to it. And again, very comfortable seats without a doubt. But now let's take a look at the steering wheel here. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped. If you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, it is going to be a perforated leather wrapped if you were to go with the calligraphy trim level only, otherwise it is going to be this smooth leather wrap steering wheel that you are currently looking at, let's say for the limited. So heated steering wheel as well, coming with the limited trim level and up then. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the circular button that says hold, that is going to be your remote start, which does come standard on the SEL trim level and up along with a push button start also SEL trim level and up so all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up this is one of my favorite parts about the Palisade you do have your conventional gauges coming with the SE and SEL trim levels however if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy you will get this current 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster that I absolutely love. And the reason why I love this thing, because when you change the driving modes, let's say you put it in eco, you're gonna get a bunch of green hues. If you put it in sport, it's gonna do this explosion. And then it's gonna get a bunch of red hues, a more sportier gauge cluster. If you put it in comfort, you're gonna get a bunch of blue hues. It completely adjusts. And it's not only that, you can of course adjust what is on there. You could check out the tire pressure. You could check out your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Of course, trip A, trip B, when you need your next oil change, average miles per gallon, at any given time you can choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to although it's already inside of the regular speedometer i guess you could say so plenty customizable you can really tailor this digital gauge cluster to make it your own and so that is why i absolutely love digital gauge clusters in general but anyways not for the gauges let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality you're going to get a conventional sunroof if you go with the sel however if you go with the limited or calligraphy you will get a dual panel sunroof meaning the driver and front passenger have their own sunroof and the rear passengers then have an even larger sunroof in the back so that is pretty cool LED interior lighting coming with the SEL trim level and up. I personally absolutely love that. Just in front of that LED interior lighting, you actually have a school bus style mirror so you could spy on the rear passenger. So that is kind of interesting. So that's kind of cool to have that, I guess. And when it comes to the headliners, they're actually going to differ as well. For the SE and SEL, you're gonna get a traditional headliner, but for the limited, you will get, I believe it's called a melange headliner. So that is currently what you're looking at. It's kind of like a bunch of different colors kind of all mixed in and it's a pretty soft soft headliner as well. Then if you were to go with the calligraphy, you're gonna get a microfiber headliner, which kind of feels like a suede kind of feel to it. So 
Overall, I love the headliners. That is pretty cool. I like that they're different there. And that's a thing I specifically always look for because I like the attention to detail that Hyundai and Kia always do with their headliners for whatever reason. But anyways, continuing on, 64 colors of ambient lighting I'm loving right now. In our limited trim level, it's also, of course, gonna come on the calligraphy, but 64 colors is a ton of different options. Your kids in the back are absolutely gonna love that in the back, and again, it's a lot of different color options. I personally absolutely love that. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home line controls for up to three different garage doors, coming with the SEL trim level and up, big fan of that. Dual zone climate control with a clean air ionizer coming with the SEL trim level and up. So you're not gonna get that with the SE, so I wanted to elaborate on that. I like this gloss black finish with kind of a little design to it running through the doors as well as just above the passenger side vents there. Also a big fan of this silver texturized finish found surrounding all of these buttons here in the middle and that actually continues around the buttons on the doors then as well. And I like that they didn't leave it just a boring black plastic. They did paint the actual window button silver as well, which I'm a big fan of. All this silver accents and these silver trims, it makes it much more of a high end finish in my personal opinion. So. Definitely a fan of that. But anyways, just behind the drive buttons here, you do have dual cup holders. If you actually push on those buttons surrounding the cup holders there, that's how you're gonna go ahead and open them up. Or you can push them back closed if you wanted to as well. You do have a wireless phone charger found just beside those cup holders as well. And within the center armrest, a ton of space, very deep center armrest there. You have a USB charging port within there, a 12 volt power outlet, and a little tray found in the upper portion of that as well. So plenty of space in there and overall, very impressive interior quality. Even the attention to detail around the passenger side glove box handle there, it's surrounded in a perimeter of silver where they could have just left it that black plastic like literally every other manufacturer does but they didn't. It's the attention to detail that I'm always a big fan of. So now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display. And so you're gonna get an eight inch color touchscreen display if you were to go with the SE or SEL trim levels. However, if you were to jump up to the limited or calligraphy, you will get a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I will say though, with the SE and SEL trims, you get wireless. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. I love that feature and I wish Hyundai would have put that in the limited and calligraphy for whatever reason they're not able to or they didn't or whatever the case is. I do love the wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You need to get the SE or SEL in order to get that though. Driver Talk intercom system coming with the limited and calligraphy trim levels. And these little widgets or apps, whatever you wanna call them, found on the screen here, I feel like they're a different color than last year. So I got some brighter cyan blue colors on the apps this year. So definitely, I believe that's a change. That does not look familiar to me and I'm pretty good at remembering this stuff. So that looks pretty cool though. Rear seat quiet mode coming with all trim levels. Essentially what that is, is if the kids are sleeping in the back seats, it cuts off those rear speakers and limits the front speakers to a volume, I believe of seven. So kind of keeps the kids asleep in the back seats. Well, meanwhile, you can still listen to whatever you want to listen to up front. That's pretty cool. Voice memo system also coming standard on this one. So you could record your voice and then play it back at a later date if you did not want to forget something. Thing. Sounds of Nature, one of my favorite parts about Hyundai and what they do. If you press that button, you have Lively Forest, Calm Sea Waves, Rainy Day, Open Air Cafe, Warm Fireplace, and Snowy Village. And so, having now rambled all of them off for you, what do you guys say? I am going to shut up here and I'll just let you listen to those real quick and I'll be right back. All right, and so in addition to that, of course, you could check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the speaker setup for the Palisade, six speakers for the SE and SEL. However, if you were to jump up to the limited or calligraphy, you're gonna get a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So, and that is pretty cool speaker setup too. I mean, I like the silver texturized design to them. They could have left them up gray black plastic like a lot of other manufacturers do but they didn't so like the upscale look and having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio and let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one it's brilliant it's dang brilliant i love the sound system there the Harman cardon at least 
on the Palisade. That was amazing. I'm not used to that. That was dang good. Not the very best I've heard because I've done a ton of sound systems, but that was dang good. That was a very good sound system for this one. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Palisade in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, you will also get a surround view monitor. It's going to be the little screen to the right there displaying to you what is completely around your vehicle, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Palisade is an IIHS top safety pick which pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags also coming standard driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system it's all pretty boring but also coming standard for all trim levels across the board you will find rear parking sensors rear occupant alert forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection adaptive cruise control with stop and go which is a brilliant feature here on hyundai they do that very well lane following assist lane keep assist and a driver attention warning system then as well but then if you were to jump up to the sel trim level and up you're also going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert along with safe exit assist then if you were to jump up to the limited or calligraphy, you will find front parking sensors in addition to the rear parking sensors, ultrasonic rear occupant alert, and highway driving assist as well. And so that's kind of like Hyundai's autonomous driving, so to speak. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Palisade, love the digital gauges, love the ambient lighting colors. I'm a huge fan of that, actually. Love the sounds of nature. Nobody else is doing that right now. Like the little idiosyncrasies and little quirks of vehicles. So Hyundai Palisade definitely has a lot of those. Love the suede headliner on the calligraphy. And I'm a pretty big fan of the headliner that we have here on the Limited as well. Great exterior styling, in my personal opinion. And overall, just an amazing value. When you take into account all the innovations that the Palisade has, comparatively speaking to other SUVs in the market right now, and you add to that America's best warranty if you drive less than 10,000 miles a year like I do this is going to be warranted for 10 years when it comes to the engine and the powertrain and the drive shaft the transmission all that stuff that is a long time for a warranty and by the time that is up you're probably going to want a new vehicle anyway so a big fan of that also the three years of complimentary maintenance not having to pay for things for the first three years that is pretty cool as far as room for improvement goes really the only thing I could think of right now is the wind noise at highway driving speeds and again it doesn't bother me because i do have it in both of my vehicles but having test driven over 600 vehicles at this point i will say you typically don't find this kind of highway driving noise with other vehicles out there but anyways that's the only room for improvement i got but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel anyways do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold